When you first open a trading form backtest model, this is the page that you will see. And this is the results page and it also contains inputs into the model. I'm going to start over here on the left and go through what each of these cells does. So the first one of these is the starting capital. This is quite logically the amount of money being tested as part of the trading strategy at the beginning of the testing period. So we can go over to here on the capital graph and we can see that this matches up exactly right at the start with our starting capital. Now the next cell on here allows us to reflect real world conditions and the real world conditions for traders is that it, there is a cost incurred in opening and closing a position and this cell and the cell below allows us to account for the cost of trading. Now this will vary significantly by market if you're trading a very liquid market like the euro US dollar or the Q's ETF you will have a relatively low cost of trading because these markets are very liquid a lot of people want to trade them and there's a very reduced level of slippage. If you're going to be trading small cap stocks or exotic currency pairs you will generally expect to have a higher cost of trading. You can apply this either as a percentage or a fixed cost and this fixed cost is a dollar amount it might be five or ten dollars whatever is appropriate for your strategy and the market that you are trading. Now the profit target is calculated in most trade informed models as a multiple of the ATR. Now this means that the ATR, the average true range is, is a very useful way to calculate the profit target because it not only adjusts to the price of the market, it adjusts to the recent level of volatility and the range of the market. So in this case I'm using a value of 100 which means that the profit target will be calculated when the trade is entered at 100 times the ATR. The stop loss, the cell below, is calculated in exactly the same way and in this example it would be calculated as five times the ATR. Now the trailing stop, you don't need to use this, you can set a value of zero to exclude this but if you want to include a trailing stop this means that the stop loss will now be moving in the direction of the trade. So for a long trade the trading stop will be moving upwards and only upwards. It would never move downwards. Now it's calculated at five times the ATR like the normal stop loss but if the position moves in the direction of the trade the new high point, the intraday high point is used to recalculate the ATR, to calculate the trailing stop and the current ATR whenever the stop is moved is used for this calculation. Now the leverage factor is a way of increasing and decreasing the position size. Now I've set this to 1 and you can see that I've got a little note here saying adjust this. So this is a cell you can adjust from 1 to 2 or 0 0.5 whatever is appropriate and what it will do if I set it to 2 is it will, in it will increase these values the potential reward and the maximum risk. Now these are expressed as a percentage because these mean that if this profit target that we set here is reached then the capital would increase by 200 percent. But if this stop loss here of five times the ATR is hit then our capital would reduce by 10 percent. 
So a lot of the time we want to understand our maximum risk and this is the way that we can do it using a trade informed model. If you want to take on less risk or simulate less risk then you can adjust this to whatever value you like and you can see that the risk drawdown and all the other values increase or decrease proportionately. Now if we go down we're looking now at variables that are different for different trading strategies. So in this case because this is a stock market based trading strategy I often have a adjustable checkbox here which means that we can have a look at just long trades. And if I check this you can see we are now only taking long trades. And if I uncheck it once again we're including short trades. Now here we have a series of model specific parameters. These relate to an EMA and the MACD and if we were to change these values they would change the backtest model and these would be reflected in the results. These parameters will be different for every model and you can also include your own parameters, build in your own parameters and ways of refining your model. Now these are entry parameters. What we've got here now are exit parameters. And use a closed base stop is something that is in a number of trade informed models. And what this is, at the moment, the standard way of setting up a profit target and a stop loss is with a hard stop that is in the market at a specific value. And as soon as this value is hit intraday, then the position is closed. But if we wanted to take a closed based stop, this means that the position is only opened and closed at the end of the day. So whatever value the market hits during the day, if the price for our stop loss or profit target is exceeded at the end of the day, then and only then will it be closed. You can see if I check this, it makes a small difference to the results. Now this is a different type of close. Almost all trade informed models have different ways to exit the position. And a Bollinger Band close is one that I quite like and I've included in a few of my own strategies. And in this case, if I were to check this box, this means that if, taking the example of a long trade, if the price has exceeded the upper Bollinger Band on a closed basis, then the position will be closed. And we can set here the Bollinger Band multiple. We could set it to one to include a lot more clo um, a lot more trades. We could set it to two and two point five to be closing fewer trades. Okay, so these are the inputs. Now over here we have the strategy results. The first two of these are the gross winning and gross losing trades. This is the dollar amount of all the winning trades and all the losing trades. And the difference between these two is our net profit. Now the profit factor is a useful metric that I quite often refer to. This is the absolute value of gross winning trades divided by the gross losing trades. The next two cells here show the number of winning trades and the number of losing trades and they are used to calculate the percentage of winning trades. Now the two cells below this are the average value of our winning trade an average value of our losing trade and below this we have the value of the largest winning trade and the value of the largest losing trade. 
All of these are useful information when analyzing any trading strategy. Now below this we have the compound annual growth rate and this is calculated as the growth rate of the strategy on a compounded basis over the entire time of the strategy. So in this case the compound annual growth rate is 6.7%. And the next metric down here is the max drawdown. Now this is calculated as the highest value peak to trough drawdown over the lifetime of the strategy. So visually we can see that this drawdown occurred somewhere around here to here with a reduction in 23.7%. Now the series of three cells below this are the underlying market. Now I can scroll down, we can see this. This is the Q's ETF which reflects the NASDAQ 100 market and we can see that we've got a time period here of 18.3 years. The compound annual growth rate of the market, so again from the start, the finish is 3.3%. And the maximum drawdown, which was somewhere from here to here, during the dot-com crash 2000 to 2002, was 83%. So we've got a comparison with our strategy and the underlying market. So we've got an idea of the difference between our strategy and buy and hold. Now we've got a button here. This button uses a VBA macro and what it does is it copies the scenario, this particular scenario over into another page. So I can copy it here. We can see that it's copied it over here. I know I might want to do a list explaining what I've set up here just so I have a reminder. Now if I'm going to scroll a bit lower I can see that we have the results of the long trades and the short trades. It's always handy particularly in stock market strategies to understand where our profit is coming from and how our long trades and short trades compare.